I'm really on the roll with chassis lately, but this one definitely deserves to be looked at. Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. The new Defined series lost an R in its naming, but it got a number promotion, it's now 7. Define 7. Editing Matthew here, excuse the on the camera Matthew for the lame puns, he sometimes gets overly excited. So what's actually new? It is instantly recognizable as one of Fractal's models, it has that clean cut look which a lot of people like, with a big tempered glass side panel almost completely covering the left side of the chassis. The build quality is top notch wherever you go, I really couldn't find anything in that regard to complain about. But before I go into details, let me first show you the time lapse of me putting some hardware in it. Of course, the clean front panel completely dominates the chassis look, we have this brushed aluminium door with a deeply placed LED indicator light on the top edge of it. There's also a hint of Fractal's new generation logo in the bottom left corner. The door is somewhat weakly held close by magnets and swings open easily to a 90 degree angle carried by two hinges. If you want to, you can reposition the door so it opens from the right side by switching places of the hinges. On the top you can see a spot for 5 and a quarter inch drive with its own compartment and dust filter, while below it we have a big dust filter for the front fans which doesn't pop out easily, you need to introduce some force, so be careful when doing that. The side ventilation holes of the front panel seem to be big enough, they are really wide and have a decent gap between them, similar to the Vector RS model, this could provide enough airflow, but I'll check that out a little bit later on. What I like the most about this front panel is that you don't have to open the door or pull it off in order to clean the big bottom dust filter, you can just take it out without any obstacles. Down there you will also find 4 big plastic feet carrying some rubber padding. I have the light tempered glass version of Fractal's Define 7, which is almost completely clear, with just a slight hint of dark, but all in all, you can see through it without a problem, so all of you out there who plan to do a build in it without any RGB components, you'll be able to showcase your hardware without an issue. Pulling the glass side panel off is really easy, it only takes a second, you have this tab that slides and releases the lock, just be careful when doing it for the first time, if you pull it too hard it may fall off from the bottom hinge. If you do it slowly the top completely releases while the bottom edge of it leans into these cutouts. The same goes for the right side panel which is even more convenient since you don't have to be so careful with it. Bottom line, pulling these panels off is a very seamless experience, no screws or tools, probably one of the best systems I've ever seen so far. Since we are talking about pulling stuff off, the top panel just pops right off, it's out of there in a matter of moments, nothing is holding it down, not IOs, not cables, it's completely free of anything and the same goes for the front panel. Speaking of IOs, we have a serious lineup here, where besides your power on and reset switch, you'll get separate audio in and audio out 3.5mm jacks, 
one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port and four USB Type-A ports, two of them 2.0 and two of them 3.0 ports. Back to the top panel, the reason why it's easily removable in the first place is that you have an option to go for a different mesh panel plus a dust filter, both coming with the chassis bundle, for builds where you want to put a radiator or fans on the top. Since I already tried that with Vector RS, which is practically the same when it comes to airflow and cooling potential, for this time I've decided to go full turtle mode so I can see what can I get out of it acoustics and temperature wise. More so since this is a silent oriented chassis, it has a lot of dampening material all around its panels and I myself am a noise freak so I was really interested in checking if this is one of the best ways of keeping the noise down as much as possible. Of course, if it suits your needs, don't hesitate to use that mesh top cover, you'll probably get better temperature results with some higher noise floor as a compromise in that regard. I would really like to see that Fractal maybe offers this as an option when buying the chassis, for example if you want to choose to go for a full panel or a mesh panel, just as you can pick out tinted or less tinted glass panels, while it would also probably bring the cost of the end product for the user itself. Speaking of the temperatures, we have a total of three 140mm Dynamic X2 GP14 fans pre-installed, they are really quiet and move a lot of air, so they bring best from both worlds. Temperatures were pretty standard compared to what I've seen in other chassis with a similar configuration. The Ryzen 7 3700X CPU was roaming just a bit above 80 degrees Celsius with Noctua's NHD 15 Chromax on it, while the Sapphire RX 5600XT Pulse graphics card holds its temperature steadily at 75 degrees Celsius which is again pretty standard and almost comparable to my open testbed review of it, more so since it was a pretty hot day when I did chassis temperature testing. As for the noise that they make and what was the Fine 7 capable of suppressing, here's a couple of short sound clips of that, while also showing you the sound meter for a measurement comparison. The inside of the Define 7 is basically the same as with Vector RS model, which I've recently reviewed. Feel free to check it out in the right top corner of this video. It's very roomy, building in it was a breeze. We have two main compartments, the left side with the motherboard tray and the right side with the drive tray rail, which was in this case configured to be flush with the motherboard tray. Again, you can pull this panel to the front and make a separate drive cage out of it, or you can leave it like it was in my case and cover the bottom part with this two-piece plastic cover for the power supply shroud, and these plastic parts Vector RS actually doesn't have, so the Find 7 looks a bit more completed with them. You can also, for example, choose to remove the smaller front plastic part in case you want to have a radiator in the front, or the bigger second one if you need even more room for a push-pull configuration. The power supply shroud is completely the same, we have these small cutouts on its top for better airflow of the inner portion of its compartment, while it stretches completely from the back to the front. Behind it we have a drive cage with a spot for two 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives, which uses those same drive trays that can be used in case you want to use that drive rail option which I mentioned earlier. In that case you can easily pull this cage out from the power supply shroud area, there are four screws for it on the bottom, while you also have an option to slide it back and forward against the rails if you want to still keep it but make some room for the radiator on the front. Of course you can use those two drive trays for the drive rail, although you'll probably need to buy some more if you plan to put a lot of drives. The power supply has its own installation bracket and a spot with rubber padding, as well as enough room for tucking in the cables. Back to the inside, obviously there's more than enough room for anything that comes in mind build-wise, a lot of pass-through cutouts and rubber grommets, except again one missing in the left bottom corner. 
I also wish they put one cutout in the middle of the shroud for the power supply cables coming to the graphics card, because for example, I had a bit of an awkward and ugly situation when I was doing a 2RX 5700 XT Crossfire Multi GPU setup. Feel free to check that video out, I'll put a link to it in the right top corner. I barely could make the cable run look somewhat decent as they were coming from the side. I just couldn't run the cable through the bottom cutout against the edge of the motherboard tray as it would interfere with the second GPU. Other than that, you can put up to 467mm long GPUs with fans installed on the front or 315mm one with the drive rail pushed forward. Since I had a pretty tall RAM kit, I had to bump up the first fan way above its normal alignment, but despite of that, the cooler still managed to fit as the Fan 7 can take up to 185mm tall CPU towers. For radiators, you can put up to 360mm one on the front, 420mm on the top, and 280 on the bottom, so plenty of room to do a more beefed up water cooling setup and to put and showcase your pump and reservoir. I've also just recently checked out their new Celsius Plus all-in-one water coolers. I'll put a link to that in the right top corner of this video. I've actually done a direct comparison between two different sizes of the same model, the 240 and 360 mm one, so it's a pretty interesting watch for that matter too. Moving to the other side of the motherboard tray, here we have a completely different situation compared to its brother. They did an outstanding job with making sure that you have as few problems as possible when dealing with cable management. It was all really easy to do, especially since I did this build with using their new fully modular Ion Plus 760W 80 plus platinum power supply, so I didn't have any excess cables to begin with, plus this model supports 0 RPM fan mode when the power supply is not under substantial load, so you don't have to expect a lot of dust buildup. The biggest addition is this plastic panel that completely covers the whole bottom power supply area, so we don't have to look at that cable mess that's usually sitting down there. Other than that, they also use these sort of like rails and cable holders which guide them and onto which they put velcro straps. We also have few velcro straps on the right side and a couple of hook points for the zip ties. There's more than enough space between the back of the motherboard tray and the right side panel, especially around this drive area where you can vertically fit a 3.5 inch drive onto this multi-bracket plate. You also have an option to put two 2.5 inch drives on the right side of the motherboard tray onto these brackets just below the cooler cutout. There are a few other options around the chassis which can be used for additional drive installation with the multi-bracket option. For example, you can hang drive upside down from the top. You can also put fuel along the top side of the power supply shroud. So all in all, a very versatile model when it comes to that. You can also use that multi-bracket for your pump and reservoir installation onto that plastic cover of the power supply shroud. On top of all of that, we also have this very nicely tucked away fan hub with three 4-pin PWM and six 3-pin fan headers. It can be powered using the SATA power cable or the PWM cable that hooks up directly to the motherboard. I actually have an interesting story about that. Since the pre-installed fans have 3-pin connection, I've connected them to the 3-pin fan header on the hub. At first I thought I will be able to control them over the motherboard, but then I noticed I couldn't read their RPM speed. Then I transferred them over to the 4-pin PWM headers and I was able to see their speed, but I wasn't able to control their speed at all, it was constantly running at full speed. It turns out that SATA power connection overrides the DC control over the hub cable, so I ended up plugging out the SATA power cable and only leaving the PWM header connected to the motherboard and with doing that I got the full control over the fans. Not a big deal, but maybe this helps some of you out there. And that was basically the only complaint that I had with it, but I assumed that they had their technical reasoning with it, while for everything else it's really hard to say anything bad about it. The only question that begs itself is does this chassis goes along with what are you planning to put in it, especially with having the price tag in mind. Do you really intend to use it to its fullest potential, or at least the majority of it? If you can do that, it's hard not to look at other offers, even among Fractal's own offering, because the chassis market is really big now and the prices are really competitive. On the other hand, I can understand why would someone go for it just based on its looks, practicality and build quality, even if they don't use the rest of the features that it offers. That's it for this time for me. 
Thank you once again for watching. Please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content. That really helps a lot. And if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. And if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later, guys.